Okay, well, now formally recording, we have Mr. Biff Byford from Saxon, obviously, with us today. How's it going, Biff? A huge honor having you here today. Yeah, it's nice to be there today. Um, it's raining in England today, so... Okay. <laughs> well, we, I, I'm. I, I don't know if you know. I'm in. I'm in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Uh, we're yeah, having, I know you're in Argentina. Yeah. Yep. We'll, we'll be seeing you just in a few weeks, and it's been yeah. quite of an quite of an interesting spring because we're under 13, 14 degrees, and not usually what's happening around here during November. It's would be uh, normally starting to get hot, but well, the weather is unpredictable. I know that uh, England is quite rainy though. <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're, they're quite rainy at the moment. The weather's really unpredictable everywhere, yeah. though, wherever you wherever you go. Okay. It's crazy. So you you were telling me you your your phone uh, got uh, kind of uh, messed up in the in the river. How was that like? <laughs> uh, well, I dropped it off a boat. Oh man! And then we found it. Right, the what's it's still working, but uh, it's not very good. Okay. Well, fortunately, sure something something could be rescued. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, Biff, you're, uh, let's let's get to the to the to the main uh, point of the interview. That's uh, the return of Saxon to to South America after the, yeah. the rescheduling of dates. So, first of all, uh, a simple question: uh, How are you gearing up for your return to to Argentina and, of course, the the other countries of of South America? Well, we're we're good. We're doing good. We're uh, we're getting ready. We're um, we're actually shooting a video this week for the new album. Nice. Uh, that comes out in January. But yeah, we'll be rehearsing. Uh, we'll be rehearsing for the for the shows in, uh, in South America next week, basically. So yeah, we'll be fully prepared. I mean, it's going to be the uh, the Carpe Diem World Tour. Yeah. You know, part of that. So. Um, People down there will get the same show as everybody else in uh, in Europe have had, you know. So um, yeah, it should be good. It should be good fun for sure. Uh, well, of course, in 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 the rescheduling time that you were supposed to come here in April, uh, you, you released the, the the second part of Inspirations also this year. More Inspirations, but as you said, the show is centered in 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 Carpe Diem. Um, so I mean. There's such such a huge amount of albums to choose from nowadays from from Saxon's catalog that, I mean, I look at the set list and it's a, like a greatest hit, but also with some fan favorites like Metalhead or or, or Sacrifice. So, is it hard nowadays yeah. for you guys to put a set list together? Well, it, it's well, people always want to hear the songs from the eighties, don't they? You know, Princess of the Night, Down the right. Leather, stuff like that. So that really has to be in the set. Uh, but yeah, we like to mess around a bit, you know, and put some of the deeper cuts in there, you know, like off Sacrifice and Thunderbolt and sometimes Bathroom yeah. Ram, you know. Uh, so yeah, I mean, we might uh, we might play a song from the Inspirations album. I don't know, we haven't really decided yet. Uh, but it'll be it'll be a great show, you know, with all the hits and uh, there'll be three or four songs from Carpe Diem on there, you know. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean the, the the hits actually. I I've recently seen a performance of you guys of 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 Motorcycle Man, that is of course a really really old school song from you guys. But it it really sounds so fresh, uh, that it, it it's also like you're hearing I don't know Battering Ram for example that is a more recent song or Thunderbolt with a better better recording uh, quality maybe on on the studio, but live they sound uh, fantastic as well. So th those classics kind of have been I don't know if reinvented, but uh, it, it the the power is similar. Yeah, yeah. We we play. Uh, you know, we don't play. We play the old songs with the new sounds. You know, so mm -hmm. um, I mean, everybody uses Gibsons and things. So it's quite uh, the sound is still uh, you know quite British metal. Yeah. But we just use modern modern sounds really. You know, big big backline. You know, uh, lots of effects and things. So yeah, it's. I mean, more, things like Modest Act of Man, Wheels of Steel sound really powerful, mm -hmm. uh, more powerful, more powerful than they did back in the day. Yeah. But I think that's I think that's pretty cool, you know. Yeah, for sure. Uh, well, one one of the the well, I I the, the main reason of the the um, rescheduling of your tour was the departure of, of Paul for uh, of course from from touring. Uh, well, even though you well, found it wasn't, that... it, wasn't, it wasn't just that. There was a few things happening. Oh, really? There was a what, few what was things that happening? Well, I mean, I got COVID at the oh. same time. 
uh, and I was really ill for two weeks. And then, um, and then my wife's uh, father died. My father-in-law died. Oh, so sorry to hear that. Not long after that. So it was a pretty crazy period. And we just felt we had to, you know, I couldn't really, um, we couldn't really uh, do any shows at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, rehearsing a new guitarist in time. But we had, we actually cancelled shows in America as well, so yeah, it wasn't uh, it wasn't just South America, but it was sad really. We don't like um, we don't like letting people down, but um, mm. yeah, we're coming now, so that's good. Yeah, for sure. No, I, I I think that everybody understood. Now that you're telling me this as well, I mean people people understand you you're you're not only rock stars but also human beings. <laughs> you have, of course, your day to day situations and. Fortunately, you can you can come here, as you said, and well, also you you uh, I think you're coming with Brian Tadler, right? The the, the replacement you announced for the uh, for the the touring uh, cycle of Saxon. Uh, of course, you guys go way back with Diamond Head as well. But uh, how did you know he was the the guy? Well, he was our first choice, really. Uh, we asked uh, we asked Phil Campbell as well from. Uh, Oh yeah, uh, the old Motorhead, guitar, Motorhead, of course, he yes. Too, he was too busy as well. So uh, yeah, Brian was the really the the first the first choice we had actually. Uh, um, I mean, we do we just toured with Brian with Diamond Head. Uh, he's a nice guy, and um, yeah, so it just fell into place really. All the uh, all the planets were in alignment, so it was perfect, really. Mm -hmm. Uh, and 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 what about Paul nowadays? I, I've seen he's going to tour with the uh, the band of Cards now. Uh, I imagine. He of is, course... uh, yeah. 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 He's going out with Phil uh, and his sons. Mm -hmm. So yeah, he's, he's good. He's enjoying, he's enjoying his uh, more relaxed lifestyle. I think. Right. Um, I think he's probably a bit bored. Uh, not being, you know, in, you know, not being uh, in the band, sort of uh, in a sanctum, so to speak. Uh, mm -hmm. He's still in the band, so you know until he leaves, he's still in the band. So of course, everything's pretty kosher with Paul. You know, he played on the new album a little bit, so yeah, everything's good. You know. Okay, glad to glad to hear. Uh, <clears throat> Beef, I was checking some of the of the set list you've been playing this this year. Uh, you, well, you're doing a cover that is "Ride Like the Wind" from Christopher Cross, and well, I I <laughs> that's a song from an album that I know you're not much a uh, fan of. That that's uh, Destiny. Um, but well, I, uh, I I I know that, that that song is kind of your your favorite as as, as well. So um, <laughs> I I was and seeing that said this, I got back to that record and I listened to it, and it's really a, a good album. But uh, I I wanted to know if maybe at that time there was some sort of pressure from any from a record label or someone for you guys to to shift to that more uh synth um, driven music with more maybe pop hooks and uh, it's not... what can you tell me about that i think yeah i think the band was a very a very strange period then i don't think the chemistry was good in the band mm. uh for, for destiny um it sort of came after uh i think it came after uh did it come after crusader or, or it was uh rock the nations maybe i think yeah, Roll the Nations, yeah. yeah. So Destiny was um, a strange album, you know, we made. Uh, I don't think, I thought the production wasn't great. Hmm. And um, I don't think, you know, the guitarist came up with great riffs for that album. Hmm. Um, so it was just, uh, I mean, I think Ride Like the Wind is probably the people's most favorite track off that album, actually. Uh, yeah. And, and particularly in South America, they seem to love that track. So, um, you know, we, we could we could well play that track on, on these gigs. I don't know. Let's see if anybody shouts out for it, shall we? Yeah, for sure. Uh, well, and, and of course, because in, in the 90s, 90s, for me, is one of the heaviest um, Saxon sounding albums, some of them. Uh, so, you know, is there a certain period of Saxon's uh, catalog that you enjoy the most? Uh, of course, people want to hear your your '80s classics, but uh, you personally uh, do you have a certain certain moment of of your discography where you say? Well, I, I think yeah, I think um, I think I sort of, I sort of uh, I sort of dragged the band back from uh, the abyss. I think on the Dogs of War was probably mm. uh, the first album after. You know that period 
mm-hmm. that we got back to a heavier heavier sound and uh you know more more gr- better guitarists basically and more melodic vocals so i think that was the starting point of, of us coming back to a, a place where we should be uh, i mean all them years ago back to uh, dogs of war and since dogs of war i think every album's been pretty cool actually yeah uh, you know uh, unleash the beast you know metalhead oh fantastic all, all through that time in a sanctum you know they're all they're all sort of great albums, and they're all you can hear the band getting better and better at, at uh, getting yeah. better and bigger actually with those albums. So uh, we're very lucky to to uh, come back from Destiny. I think but from the songwriting, I don't think it was as strong as some of the albums before or after. Mm-hmm. Okay. That 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 you're mentioning after <clears throat> Dogs of War that you're getting to a more maybe heavier or more more saxon like sounding uh, records um i think that people should be all re- also praising that because you've been putting out really consistent uh, records um and I, i wanted to ask you if at any point of your career maybe you asked yourselves uh to like like stop releasing albums and live as a legacy band you know because many bands do that But I imagine it's not the case with you because of all the records you've been putting out. But was that ever a question in, uh, in inside the band? No, I, I, it's me really. I don't. I don't really. I don't really want to be in a band that just plays Wheels of Steel and Seven Four Seven. You know. Uh, um, you know, for like, you know, we can do festivals and, and get a lot of money. You know, just by doing, uh, you know, the forty years or forty five years. But I like to write music, and uh, mm. and the members of this band now like to write music as well. So um, it's what we do, you know. We're songwriters as well as um, you know, as well as sort of uh, musicians. So it's so it's part of our uh, DNA to write songs. But I think that's the same with most bands that are still around. You know, Priest and Maiden, and. Yep. You know, we all have new albums, and uh, you know they're they're very relevant in the metal scene. I think I mean, Carpe Diem, for instance, was a great album, sold a lot of copies, and people seem to love it. You know, it's so, a great record. Yeah, uh, it is a great record, and uh, you know, Firepower was a great record as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I think you know, I think sometimes bands that used to be massive in the late years are a little bit scared of uh, writing new material because it won't sell as many copies. Uh, but that doesn't mean to say it's not successful, though, because, you know, if you sell a million records in 1980, maybe you just sell, like, 70,000 now, but mm-hmm. you might st- you might stream 4 million or something. So it all changes, you know, it all changes. It's all, you know, success is measured differently now. Than it was back in the yeah. that, that that's really so true uh well now that you're mentioning bands like maiden and and, and priest you know i i i read oftenly comments in social media that, that say that saxon is an underrated band uh like and and the comment that repeats many times is iron maiden is overrated and listen to saxon so in, in my opinion the, the notion that saxon <laughs> is underrated uh, is untrue because everybody knows saxon right But uh, yeah, I, I, I have you ever get... felt underrated as a as a band? That was kind of my my question. No, I don't. I think I think they get confused with successful. Okay. I mean, I, I, nobody can be bigger than Iron Maiden in mm. the metal scene. I mean, they're, they're probably you know, especially in South, South America, you yeah. know, they do like football stadiums. They're up there with like you know, mm-hmm. Ed Sheeran or something or Taylor Swift. So. Yeah. Just because they're that big doesn't mean to say that we're underrated. It just means that we're not that big. It's yeah. as simple as that, you know. And uh, somebody, you know, always somebody always has to be the most successful. And um, you know, I am made on our it, and that's the that's the fact of life. And uh, you know, we love Iron Maiden. We know the guys really well, and uh, you know, they've done a fantastic job keeping their career up there. You know, and um, you know, but. We, it, We're just as well known as Iron Maiden. We're just not as successful. And that's, that's right. That's a simple. That's a simple truth. You know. Yeah. 
Yeah, that, that, that's yeah. kind of my way of thinking because there's uh, also popularity maybe, but every like I always get back to the same. Right. Like everybody knows who Saxon is and what Saxon has contributed to the to the metal world. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. You okay. Know, and um, it, it doesn't make any difference. It's no big deal. You know, we can play. We come if we come to Argentina and play in front of three three thousand, four thousand people. We don't think, oh, we should be playing in front of like fifty thousand. We don't have that mentality, you know. We just come down there and play for our fans or, or into the music, you know. We, yeah. We'll follow our career and buy our albums, watch our videos, and, you know, that's what we're into, really. For sure. Yeah, and actually, the the, the last time you came, the, the show was uh, sold out, and now this time in Argentina, the venue is three times bigger, so uh, there's a, still a lot of interest in, in Saxon's music, that's for sure. Yeah, definitely, because, you know, the last album, like I said, the last album did well. The Inspirations album, you know, did okay down there. We got some airplay uh, of uh, some of the songs. So yeah, I mean, um, it's it, you know, staying relevant is all about touring as well. It's not just about great albums. It's also about touring and taking the time out to come down to places that are thousands and thousands of miles away mm -hmm. to play our music for our fans. You know, that's what it's all about. Absolutely. You know, Biff, there's a story that I found that that I didn't know, and also checking your 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 song list. I'm I'm not saying that you will play the same songs here in Argentina that you you play uh, for uh, for example, I don't know at some festival this this year. But about the song Crusader, uh, that they wouldn't let you play in Dubai because I found this quote that said Saxon calls for mass extermination of Arabs. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, I think I think what happened was. Uh... I think some uh, journalists uh, over yeah. there, uh, you know, it's winding people up, really. Uh, I mean, we did say we, we don't have to play the song if you don't want. I mean, it's... Uh, I mean, when you're doing historic songs like Crusader, mm. um, you know, it's it's all about uh, history and the our perception of history. It's not like, you know, in, in fact... In that battle that we're talking about, actually, Saladin won. Uh, you know, uh, the Muslim army won the Crusaders. So it's not really a song about our victory. It's a song about their victory. Of course. But it's a song about a, a young boy watching the knights go off to war. That's what it is. You know, and uh, he just wound people up and mis misquoted some of the lyrics. And uh, it just got a little bit out of control. So we decided not to go. You know, they asked us not to go basically, so we didn't go. Mm. I mean, that's that, that that was in 2006. I mean, nowadays many people speak about this cancel cultures thing, and you, you know, but people uh, taking things out of context, uh, not not super early. I mean, but 2006, I, it, it was kind of weird. And of course, you got a lot of historical songs. Um, you got Conquistador that all, uh, all speaks about South America and the, the, the Spanish people coming coming to this part of the world. Lionheart. I mean, did did any other lyric ever cause you trouble, or what? Does uh, just that time with with uh, Crusader? No, not really. Just just that one, really. Just that one. Wow. Uh, you know. So yeah. So. Um, it's just one of them things, you know, just a, a wacky thing that happened. Yeah. Ah, man, how, how, how curious. I, I didn't know that that, that story, but, uh, well, there are curious stuff in the in the mental <laughs> world, for, for sure. So, uh, mm. well, Biff, um, I, I wanted to to wrap up this interview by by thanking you, of course, for, for your time today. And, uh, yeah. well, if, if you got any any final words for, for those uh, Saxon fans here in Argentina, also in in South America, the, the, the tour is just around the corner. So, anything you'd like to to add? Yeah, we're 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 yeah we're leaving next week uh, to come down there, and uh, yeah, we're really looking forward to it. And uh, yeah, uh, keep the faith, and we'll see you all there. And uh, yeah, you know what they say: seize the day. <laughs> okay, Biff. Well, thank you very much for for your time today. Really appreciate it, my friend. We'll, yeah, we'll no I'll, no I'll catch your show here in in Argentina. Hope you have a great tour. Uh, yeah, right. brilliant. Should be good. Awesome. Yeah, all right, mate. See you. Well, see you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.